Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an exploration of a digital phenomenon that has captured millions worldwide. In this documentary, we delve into the complex tapestry of human emotion, social interaction, and the technological landscape that has given rise to the viral sensation of fail videos. Now, why do we find such joy in the misfortunes of others? The psychology of Scannon Freud will uncover the scientific underpinnings of this dark delight. As we navigate through epic fails, a social media phenomenon, we'll discover how these Moments of failure bind us together in a shared experience of humor and humanity. But what keeps our eyes glued to the screen? The signs of laughter and discomfort will reveal the intricate balance between humor and pain that makes these viral videos completely irresistible. And as we examine status, envy, and the fall from grace, we'll understand the social hierarchies at play and how viral videos and failures can level the playing field. Corporate blunders are not immune to virality. Viral service failures will take us behind the scenes of when companies get it wrong and the entire world is watching. And as we transition from laughter to empathy, in from schadenfreude to compassion, we'll explore the thin line that separates humor from humanity. The journey of fail videos from candid camera to uh, TikTok in the evolution of failed videos will chart the rise of this genre while the impact of failed videos on personal and professional lives will confront the consequences that can follow viral fame. But it's not all about the laughs. Beyond the laughs will, will challenge us to transform our reactions into positive action. And as we witness the lure of instant fame, we'll see how ordinary people are thrust into the spotlight, often with life-changing results. The anatomy of a viral fail will break down these videos to their core components and the impact of culture on human will show us the universal appeal of these shared moments of failure. We'll also confront the dark side of virality and the ethical considerations in the ethics of sharing. Finally, the influence of platform algorithms and the role of community in viral fails will reveal the unseen forces that shape what, vir what, what goes into a viral video, while the psychology behind secondhand embarrassment will explain why we cringe yet cannot, cannot look away. Join us as we conclude with the future of fail videos where we'll speculate on the trends and predictions for the next viral hit. This is more than just a documentary. It's a reflection on our collective psyche in the digital age. Let us embark on this journey together. The psychology of Scan and Freud, exploring the joy in others' misfortune. Ladies and gentlemen, fans of the fail, 
Welcome to a candid exploration of a feeling that tickles the darker corners of our human experience. Scan and Freud. This is the secret spice in the guilty pleasures we derive from fail videos. The unspoken delight in the missteps and misfortunes of other. Why do we, as viewers who love fails, find ourselves drawn to these moments? Is that a mere craving for comedy? Or is there something more profound at play within our psyche? Today, we delve or we dive into the psychology of Freud, exploring the joy in others' misfortune. Freud, a term that has wiggled its way from German into the global lexicon, encapsulates the complex cocktail of emotions that we experience when witnessing the blunders of others. It's a phenomenon that has been observed across cultures and throughout history, from the slapstick shenanigans of silent films to the viral video fails that flood our social media feeds today. But what is it about these moments that, capture, that captivates us so? Well, research suggests that our brains are wired to experience a hit of dopamine, that feel-good chemical when we see someone we envy take a fall. It's as if nature has hardwired us to feel a sense of relief, a leveling of the playing field when the high and mighty stumble. Yet, it's not just about envy. Scan and Freud can also stem from a sense of justice, a feeling that someone has gotten their just desserts. It reassures us that the world is fair, that those who climb too high or act too foolishly will inevitably come back down to earth. But let's not forget, this emotion is not without its ethical quandaries. While it may be harmful, harmless, uh, fun to chuckle at a skateboarder's failed trick, there's a line where amusement turns to malice, where the laughter can become a poison, especially when it seeps into areas like politics or personal vendettas. As we real reveal in the fails of others, we must also redirect on what this says about us. Are we seeking brief escape from our own imperfections? Or is there a deeper desire to connect with others through shared vulnerability? That's the question. Perhaps in understanding our attraction to these fails, we can learn to balance our skin and Freud with empathy and compassion. So, as we embark on this journey through the twists and turns of skin and Freud, let us be mindful of the thin line between humor and harm. May we find joy not, uh, uh, not just in the misfortunes, but also in the humanity that unites us all in our occasional fails. Thank you for joining me in, ra in unraveling the mysteries of why we love to watch others fail, and perhaps in doing so, learn a little bit more about ourselves. Epic Fails, a social media phenomenon, how viral fail videos captivate millions. Ladies and gentlemen, gather around as we embark on a journey through the fascinating world of social media and the captivating allure of epic fail videos. These snippets of life's less graceful moments have become a cultural phenomenon, racking up millions of views and becoming a staple of online entertainment. But why do these videos of mishaps and, mis and misadventures resonate so deeply? Why so deeply with us? 
It's a question that takes us into the heart of human nature and the intricacies of the digital age. As we peel back the layers, we find that these viral sensations are more than just fleeting moments of amusement. They are a reflection of our collective psyche. Epic fails have a unique power to captivate millions on social media platforms. From the skateboarders who wipe out, to the do-it-yourself disasters, to the people who can't cook, to the kids that come out of nowhere, to the, the, the laughs that happen when somebody touches somebody else in, in a profound way. They're just universal experiences that transcend language and culture. They remind us that we are all human and anything that can happen to someone can happen to us. We are all fallible and that there is a strange comfort in knowing that everyone has an off day or two or five or a hundred. But the phenomenon of viral fail videos isn't just about the laughter that felt that follows a tumble it's about the social connections these videos foster sharing a failed video isn't just about the content it's about the message it sends it says look i have found this funny and i think you will like this too it is a form of digital bonding a way to reach out and touch someone's life with a shared moment of humor Moreover, these videos often serve as a cautionary tales, a reminder to think twice before any of us acts. They can be humbling, showing us that no matter how in control we think we are, life has a way of throwing curveballs, of humbling us, showing us who's boss. <laughs> and in a world where social media often presents a curated, flawless version of life. Whoo! That shit ain't real. Fail videos offer a dose of reality. It's just the way it is. A counterbalance to the highlight reels we're used to seeing. This video, my friends, this video and all the text is a one-time shot. I am not redoing this. I am not editing this. It is what it is. And it's how I'm saying it. Continuing on. As we explore the world of epic, epic fails, we'll also consider the role of, of Skenenfreud, the secret pleasure derived from another's misfortune. It's a complex emotion that we spoke about earlier that has been part of human nature for centuries, forever. And it plays a significant role in the popularity of of these videos but it's not all about taking pleasure in someone else's pain it's also about the relief we know we have or we feel knowing that it's not just uh, a, a, an embarrassing clip that it's not us in the embarrassing clip that's what it meant to say fail videos also have a significant impact on marketing and branding they demonstrate the power of virality and the importance of authenticity in the digital marketplace. Brands that understand the appeal of these videos can harness their power to connect the audience in a genuine way, in a real and authentic way. But those that miss the mark risk becoming the subject of the next viral fail. So, as we dive into the exploration of epic fails, let's remember that these videos are more than just entertainment. They are a window into the human condition, a mirror reflecting our vulnerabilities, our need for connection, and our endless quest for authenticity in a curated world. Join me, continue joining me in the next section as we unravel the, uh, unravel the mystery of why we can't help but watch, share, and laugh at the spectacle of epic fails. There's a science to this, the science of laughter and discomfort and why we can't look away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a fascinating exploration of the science behind one of our most natural and universal behaviors, laughter. Today we delve into the curious interplay of laughter and discomfort and why despite feeling uneasy, 
we simply can't look away from those awkward, cringe-worthy moments. Laughter, as we all know it, is a complex response involving multiple regions of the brain and the body. It is a primitive noise, a form of communication that signals to others that everything is just fine. Everything is good. Everything is okay. This response is le deeply rooted in, our, in, our, in who we are as people, serving as a social glue that kept early human groups together. It still does to this day. But laughter isn't just about social bonding. It's also about survival. When we witness a disaster or a tragedy, our brains are hardwired to pay attention. This is a survival mechanism, a part of our fight or flight response. We're drawn to, the, to these events, not out of morbid curiosity, but because our brains are evaluating whether or not we're witnessing uh, of what we're witnessing is a threat to us. And yet, even in these moments of potential danger, laughter can emerge as a coping mechanism, as a way to confront our fears without immediate harm. But what about those moments that make us cringe? Why do we find ourselves unable to look away from someone else's discomfort? It turns out that laughter can have a dark side. Ha, huh, shocking. Inappropriate laughter can sometimes be a sign of cognitive issues, and it doesn't always accompany genuinely uh, accompany genuinely felt emotions. It can also be a, a social display. We use laughter to diffuse stressful situations, to break the ice, and to bond with others. It's a tool in our social arsenal, one that can turn a tense moment into a shared experience of relief and connection. The therapeutic benefits of laughter are well documented. Laughter can alter dopamine and serotonin activity, providing relief when we are uncomfortable or in a depressed mood. It's a non-pharmacological alternative treatment that can improve mental health and the immune system. Laughter decreases stress hormones like cortisol and increases endorphins, promoting an overall sense of well-being and temporarily relieving pain. Social laughter in particular is correlated with an elevated pain threshold. It's not just about changing our mood, it's about changing the physical effects that laughter has in our bodies or on our bodies. When we laugh, <laughs> that was funny. When we laugh, we're inhaling more oxygen and all the cells in our brains and body are getting a boost. Laughter is contagious. <laughs> and when we share a laugh, we're sharing the psychological benefits as well. So, as we consider the science of laughter and discomfort, let's remember that laughter is about more is more about is is about more than just jokes. It's about our shared humanity, our need to connect with others, and our instinctual drive to survive. It's a powerful tool that can transform a moment of discomfort into an opportunity for bonding and relief. And that, my friends, is why we can't look away. Until next time, I thank you for joining me. I have a lot more of these to do. I love taking these apart. Take care until next time.